with looking at the greatest commandment, which comes in two parts. We will, um, let's prepare our hearts for worship. again, O God of our salvation. May your justice shine like the sun. Christ. 
Our first scripture reading this evening comes from two Old Testament, two readings from the Hebrew scriptures. The first from Deuteronomy 6. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances, that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you arise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And a second reading from the book of Leviticus. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. reading from Matthew 22. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look at the greatest commandment. Comes in two parts, two loves. Love God, love our neighbor. Jay Leno, formerly the host of The Tonight Show, tells the story about uh, becoming quite famous and becoming the host of The Tonight Show and going home and watching a boxing match with his father. And he said there was one law, his mother, one of the commandments, his mother always drummed home to him. She'd say, you know, you might have a family that's starving and they might steal in order to survive. And that's acceptable. And you might even need to fight someone to uh, protect something, maybe protect another human. And that would be acceptable. You might go to jail, but that would be acceptable. But there is no acceptable excuse to take the Lord's name in vain. So we just don't do that in this house. So Jay is sitting there with his father watching this boxing match and one of the fighters received a huge blow and fell to the mat and Jay let out an expletive that took God's name in vain. And he said before he knew it, there was a big bonk. His mother hit him with a kettle on the side of the head. And she said, you aren't to say that. I told you, you are not to say that in this house. Jay's reflection on that was, I'm grown up, I'm big and famous, and my parents treat me like a kid. I think... He, his reflection should have maybe been, why does my mother, and he said his father agreed with her, why do my parents think that is such an important commandment? Maybe in that household it was the most important. But why is it so important? Well, we could say from our study that weakens our ability when you dishonor not merely God's name, we understand that it dishonors God's self. And it's hard to have God as your only God when you've so badly dishonored him. It's, it hurts your relationship with God, and we've been created for relationships. So Jay could have taken a different tact and maybe repented and realized how important that commandment is and asked that question. Is there a hierarchy to the commandments, maybe? Well, the Bible suggests that we've been created for relationships. The first and foremost, the most the primary relationship we have is with Almighty God. We look at that second chapter of Genesis and we see how Almighty God walked. I realize they anthropomorphized God into a human being and had him walk in the garden with Adam and Eve. Do I believe that really happened? No. But it suggests to us that God created us for a purpose, to have an intimate relationship with him. 
And if we look at the commandments, there seems to be a hierarchy to them. Because I don't think it's an accident that the fifth commandment, thou shalt not murder, comes before, comes after, excuse me, you shall have no other gods. You shall not take God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. All about our relationship with God. And then even our relationship with our parents. Honor your father and mother. It seems like that order suggests that those commandments are more important than even life and that there are some things worth dying for. Our relationship to God, our relationship and our honor to our parents are even worth dying for. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? What do you think the greatest commandment is? And Jesus shared the Shema, something that every Jew was supposed to say first thing when they woke in the morning and say it four times in a day. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Jesus said that's the greatest commandment. Why? It's all about that relationship to God that's supposed to be our most important relationship. We need that relationship. And then Jesus said, and there's a second like it. Now, notice, both of these commandments are found in the Old Testament. Jesus, scholars say, is the first one to put them together. Created for relationships, first and foremost, a relationship with God. Secondarily, our relationships to others. So, that's when Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Why? We need our neighbors. We need that relationship to others. We need to serve others. We need to have that relationship with God. It gives us life, gives us grace, mercy, forgiveness, and gives us life. But we need that relationship to others. Studies on happiness, I think happiness might be an overstudied <laughs> part of life. But they suggest that those people who are the most happy are those people that volunteer. that serve others. And I thought, oh boy, they're going to give us some out of this world um, goal to, to try to live toward. But here's what they said. Happy people serve on an average, volunteer on an average 5.7 hours a month. There's nothing to that, right? 5.7 hours a month. Unhappy people serve 0.6 hours a month on an average. Just points out that we need other people. We need to love other people. We need to serve other people. When we do, it does something good to us. Why? We were created for those relationships. Friends are helpful in adversity. If you're a friend to someone, it's helpful to them. If you're in adversity, 
You need that friend. I don't know if you uh, heard Morning Edition this morning, but a reporter, Barbara Bradley Hagerty, gave a report about uh, uh, taking part in a, a study. The study was where they put electrodes on her and put her in a room. And every time a red X showed up on the screen, she was shocked. And she said it wasn't just a little, the, the, the gals told her it was just going to be a little tickle like a static, static electricity shock in the, and she said it was far worse than that. She dreaded seeing that X. And they put uh, electrodes on her head to measure her brain waves. And as soon as she saw that X, her brain sent out all kinds of waves in disarray. She was highly agitated. And when a, one of the technicians went in and held her hand and she saw that red X, her brain still went berserk. But when a good friend of hers that she's known for a couple of decades, a very close friend, came in and held her hand when she saw the red X, her brain stayed calm just from a friend. Jesus said, love God with all your might and love your neighbor as yourself. When we love people, they need us to love them. And we need them to love us. It's what we're about. So Jesus says, love God, love your neighbor. Others need us, we need others. Chuck Colson and Jack Eckhart. Jack Eckhart, Eckhart was the one who owned those pharmacies throughout the country, so he's a filthy rich individual. But he was a philanthropist and he was with Chuck Colson. Does everybody remember who Chuck Colson was? Went to prison uh, because he was... Uh, uh, did illegal things under the Nixon administration, uh, came out of prison, uh, became a Christian while he was in prison and came out of prison and started a prison ministry. So he went to prisons throughout the world. And they were going to visit, and he was with Jack Eckert, and they went to this Russian prison, a woman's prison. And he said it was terrible. It was freezing. There was mud and water on the floor that was slush. It was so cold. And these women came in these garments that were just uh, like sacks on them that were all worn out and, and repaired and, and everything. And they were standing there in the lunchroom. And these women were getting their meals and they were trying to talk with them and some of them would talk and exchange, exchange pleasantries, but they acted as though they didn't really care if they were there. And Chuck Colson was told by his doctor to stay away from the food. And he looked over at the food, and they, they had these big pots that they were told when they went into the prison that the staff won't even eat the food that they give to the prisoners. And he said it was some kind of gray, soupy gravy with chunks in it that did not look like any meat he has ever seen. And they dumped this over rice in a bowl. And he was hoping they could avoid getting close to it because it stank. 
But the next thing he knew it, Jack Eckert goes up to the woman serving and says, how's the food in this place? And she got this big smile on her face and she handed him a bowl and put some rice in it and then put a big scoop of this slop on it. And then Chuck Colson had a bowl thrust in his hand and he's going, oh, no. And he said, she gave him a bigger scoop. And then they went and sat down. And he said, his table grace was, dear Lord, kill any germs in this stuff. <laughs> and then he said, they started eating. And something happened. The moment we started to eat, the atmosphere in that dismal prison dining hall was transformed. Inmates got up from other tables and joined us. People laughed and spoke with us. Some of the women showed us the crosses that they wore around their necks. Even the ones who did not speak English knew that because we were eating their food, we were with them. Chuck Colson learned something that day about loving your neighbor by simply being, being eating their food. Transformed the place, can you imagine? Those women didn't want to visit from American dignitaries. They wanted people that would love them. But Jesus says, greatest commandment, love God. Love God with all your might. And love others. And in return, God gives us life and salvation but most importantly, we learn that our lives are about being in relationship. Amen.
gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 